Hey everybody, a quick aside before we get started, for those doing the horror game tutorial, do not worry, those videos are still coming. I just wanted to start a new series that's also a bunch of one-off videos, so I can have a series and a bunch of tip videos. Let's begin. So today I want to talk about global variables and variables in general, and what I wish I knew when I first started. Um, if you're watching this video, I'm going to assume you already know what a variable is, and to demonstrate what I want to show you today, I have a basic key blueprint set up as well as a basic door set up. Now, something you might do when you're new is I had the problem of, well, if I want a door to require a certain key, it's going to be its own blueprint. And therefore, I'm going to need a key blueprint for every single door and a door for every single key. It's the only way I could really figure out how to get them to work together. Well, I'm now going to show you how to use variables so you only need one key blueprint and one door blueprint. Let's start by opening up the key blueprint. On the inside, you'll see I have not done the code yet. I have a simple blueprint interface, uh, which is how I do my interactions. And on the left hand side, we have one variable set up, which is the key ID, which is a set of text. And I have the eyeball open, so that way it is set to public. What does public mean? Let's head back over to our uh, first person map viewport. And over here on the right hand side, you'll see that there is a default value called key ID. That means that I can set this to anything I want. So for example, let's make a couple. Oh, one more there. We have three keys. Key one, we'll name it, or we'll make it key ID one. Key ID two. And key ID three. And since they're public variables, uh, each one is different now. This is important because if we go over here to our door blueprint, you'll see I have much more of the code already finished in this one. The code right now is basically just a, a door. It's literally set up to be a door right now. And if we head down here to the unlock door function, you'll see that the door also has a key ID. So what I'm going to do in our door that is already placed, I'm gonna go ahead and give this one a key ID of one. And I'm gonna make sure that it is set to locked. Again, something that I can easily set up by just making the variable public. So now, since it's public, I know that any of these doors that I place can be locked or unlocked simply by hitting a button. But we're gonna delete those two. However, you'll note that an issue we're having is the key has an ID, the door has an ID. How do we make sure the player has that key so the door opens? Yes, they share the same key ID, but there's like currently no way to match those. Now there's two ways to do this. The first would be to go into your first person character or third person, whatever you have on yours, and you could go over here on the left hand side and you can create a variable and call it like key ring and then add it to the key ring by just making this a set of text, right click it so it's an array. And you'll see that now we have an array of key ring or an array that is key ring. And you could add all the text to this. That is a valid way to do it, but it's not how I like to go about it. And there's a reason. I like to keep things as clean as possible. And in order to do that, I like to take all the keys or key IDs that I have for a certain level and keep it within that level. Now, I for one do not like using the level blueprint for this, which is what I assume a lot of you just assumed I would bring up. No, actually, I like to create something. If we go over here to episode four here, I like to create something called the brain BP. The brain underscore BP. Now you can set it up so that way the brain will work on all levels using variables, but I'm going to do this in kind of a brute force way instead um, by making it so it's specifically only for this level. 
And what we're going to do is we're literally not going to put anything in the viewport. We're not going to add any components, none of that. All we're going to do is we're going to head over here to the event graph. We're going to delete all of this and we are going to create a variable and we're going to call that variable uh, key ring. Or in fact, I was saying I was only going to make it for this level, but this will work for any number of levels. We'll make it text. We're going to make it an array by right clicking it. And now we have key ring. What we need to do is we need to right click and create a custom event. And in that custom event, it's going to be add to key ring. And on the right hand side, we're actually going to make it so it requires an input. An input basically means to run this function, we need additional information. So we're actually going to add an input and we're going to make it a set of text and we're going to call it key ID. So when this gets called, we'll provide a key ID. And then on the key ring, what we'll do is we'll pull out and we'll hit add. I like to specifically always do add unique in this case, just in case there's some weird bug where it tries to add it multiple times. Add unique will make sure it only gets added once. And since it requires the input of the key ID, all we have to do is drag it down like that. And now we have access to the key ring. So we're gonna compile and save that. And what's great about the brain BP, which by the way, in order for it to work, make sure you put it into the level. But what's great about the brain BP is it can act as a set of global variables that everything can access. And you might be wondering, how is that possible? Well, I'll show you because both the key and the door are going to need access to the key ring. Let's go ahead and go back into our key BP. So whenever this gets interacted with, what we're going to do is, actually I'm getting ahead of myself, one moment. We're gonna right click, we're gonna create a custom event because we need access to the brain. So we're gonna do get brain ref like this. And with that brain ref, what we're going to do is we're gonna pull out and we're gonna say get all actors of class. Now this is convenient because we're only gonna have one brain per level. So since we only have one brain per level on the out actors, all we have to do is type in get and then a copy. It'll say zero, which is perfect because zero is the first one on the list. And the first one on the list in this case is the only brain that's there. Pull out the other side and we're gonna promote it to a variable. Now on the left, you'll see we have new variable zero. Go ahead and F2 and we're gonna change that to brain ref. And we're gonna hit compile and save. So now the door or all the keys that are put into the game are gonna have access to the brain. And we're gonna do that by on event begin play, which if you don't know how to do that, you can right click and hit event begin play, but if you just hold P and click on the keyboard, it also creates it. We're gonna run get brain ref. So now if the key is in the map, whenever the game begins, it's gonna grab the reference to the brain. Then it's gonna make it a variable. And then if we interact with it, what we're going to do is we're going to get whatever our key ID is and we're gonna get the brain. So we, need, we have both the key ID and the brain. Uh, let me move things around a little bit here. Uh, out, the, out the brain ref, we're going to, or actually don't add, type in get key ring. So now we have access to the key ring and we're gonna type in add, specifically unique, or actually no, you don't have to do that. I forgot we set up a function, I apologize. We literally just have to type in add to key ring because we already set this up in the brain. So now whenever the key is interacted with, it will send, it'll say, hey brain, I have a key and this is my ID. And then we'll delete actor because we'll have, you know, picked up the key. So now, whatever the key ID is, which we get to set right here, so in this case, this one would be key ID 01, whenever we interact with the key, it's going to send that key ID to the key ring in the brain ref and then destroy the actor. That's perfect. So now we need to do something similar to the door. Let's go ahead and go up here to the top and we're gonna type in custom event and we're gonna, again, get 
brain ref. We're going to get all actors of class. We're going to get the brain BP. We're going to type in get, copy, pull out, and do promote to variable, plug it in, change the name to brain ref. Then on event begin play, we are going to get the brain ref like that. And boom. To unlock the door, we're going to take our key ID. Well, actually, let's get the brain ref. What we're going to do, put that on top. Sorry, I'm very OCD about this. I like to keep it clean. What we're going to do is we're going to get the key ring like that. Then out of the key ring, we're gonna type in contain. So then we're gonna get contains item. And we can type, and here's the doors key ID. We can put that right in. So now if the key ID equals the doors key ID, which you can make these different names if it's confusing to you. I actually recommend it. I'm kind of seeing how saying key ID is already becoming quite confusing on which one I'm talking about. But regardless, if they all line up, then we can run toggle door, which in this case, just so you know what I'm doing, toggle door just looks and see if it's open and then chooses closed or open based on if the door is currently closed or open. We're going to go ahead and hit compile and save. So now what's going to happen is if you remember correctly, this one here is the one we need. It should be locked. Yep. It's locked. As you can see, it's not opening. Oh, it is. Why is it doing that? Okay, I figured it out. Sorry, it was something to do with my code. Don't worry. It's nothing that I showed you. So we're gonna grab the first key here that we know is an incorrect one. We'll go to the door. Nothing happens. What if we grab the correct one? The door opens. So this is a very simple example of using doors and keys. However, using global variables in something that I call the brain is very useful for a lot of reasons. Something that you're going to find yourself doing a lot is creating a custom event and you're going to be like, get the player ref, got to access the player variables, right? So then you go, okay, get player, or I'm sorry, cast to first person character. We're going to get the player character, right? We've all done this. We all know this process and you got to do it all the time. Promote it to a variable. I like to call mine player ref. However, using the brain BP, see how I did it in the brain BP? If I have an event begin play where I run this, now all I have to do if I, let's say for whatever reason, the door needs to access the player, all I got to do is pull out the brain ref, pull this out and say, get player ref. And now we have access to the player as well. So this brain does a lot of things. I also control the flow of the level this way. But for now, I think I'm going to end it here. Let me know if you learned something. Let me know if there's something you'd like to learn. I'm also creating a series about creating your own horror game from scratch. And I have a Patreon if you'd like to support me. It would mean the world. I'm trying to make a job out of this, and it's very difficult. Thank you so much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. And I'll see you in the next episode.